everyone, this is Miss Longley, and today we are going to be working on task two of the Ecology Map project. At this point, you should have already made a copy of the template and completed task one, which was pinning three locations within your chosen biome. With task two today, you're going to take your chosen biome and you are going to narrow it down by identifying a region or location that you would like to explore further. So for example, team biology's biome of choice was the temperate forest. That spans across the entire world, and we narrowed down that choice to the California redwoods forest. So keep that in mind when you are picking an ecosystem. If it spans over several countries or states, try to narrow it down to a very specific region. Let's take a look at what team biology has so you have an idea of what an ecosystem means. So here is our map. Again, you've completed task one, which is pinning three locations within your biome. For example, ours again is the temperate forest, so we picked three locations here. If you want to use one of those locations as your ecosystem, that's totally fine. That's probably the easiest choice. But if you wanted to find another fourth location to be used as your ecosystem, that's fine too. All you have to do is Google uh, parks or wildlife refugees in so-and-so biome. That's how you can find one. So again, our specific ecosystem is going to be the California Redwoods Forest. All right, so what is task two? Task two is where you are going to be researching a population of an endangered species. So you're going to find one endangered species that lives in your specific ecosystem. You are going to place a pin on the likely location where that species lives. Hint, look for green areas, a national park or wildlife refuge. It's going to be hard to figure out where they are, but just do your best in placing that pin where the species might live. In your pin, you are going to include the following. Here you're gonna include the name of the species, the picture of the species, and if you can, a graph of the population over time. For some species, it might be too hard to find the graph. Um, so try your best, and if you can't, don't worry about it. The third thing is you're going to identify the current global population of that species. And then you're going to describe some reasons why its population has changed over time due to natural or human impacts. So let's take a look at biology team's example of the California redwood forest. All right, as you can see here, I have the second task, which is the population of endangered species. And I have pinned the northern spotted owl, which is located right here. Again, I just pinned it in an area that was green, assuming that it's probably likely in that area. So let's point out the things that we need to include. One of them being a picture of your species, the name of your endangered species, and then include some text about why that specific species is endangered, whether it's human impacts or natural impacts. And then also include how many are currently left in the wild. So for this northern spotted owl, there are 5,000 remaining in the wild. We also included a graph. It's a little hard to see right here. Um, but as you can see, their population is declining. So again, if you can't find a graph, that's okay. Try your best. Um, but for sure, include a picture of your species. All right, so let's talk about how do you find out what endangered species live in your ecosystems. There's two ways. If you are already aware of an endangered species that can be found in your ecosystem, but you want to double check, there is an endangered species list that will be linked in the Schoology quiz. So let's take a look at the worldwildlife.org. This is the link that will bring you to the endangered species directory. From here, you can search and find specific species if you are aware of where it currently lives in that ecosystem. So for example, if you wanted to investigate the giant panda because you are doing an ecosystem that is in the region of China, that works. 
Or if you still are unsure of what endangered species are out there, you can do a simple Google search. So for example, I might type in endangered species in Redwood National Park. And then from there, I'm going to get a search result. Here it lists a couple of them. So the Western Snowy Plover, that's a type of um, bird and they list a couple here. So you can start there if you're unsure of what endangered species is living in your ecosystem. So again, for task two, you are only pinning one endangered species on your map. If you need more help on how to pin, I'm gonna show that just now, but if you are ready to go, go ahead and get started. All right, if you're at the point where you're ready to place your pin, if your map currently looks like this, you do need to go to edit mode. So I'm gonna click on edit over here. And I'm gonna make sure that I am currently clicked into the layer that is the population of endangered species. So I'm gonna click here. And I'm going to zoom in on the area of my ecosystem. So that is the California redwoods. All right, so here I can see the, those green areas. When I'm ready to place my pin, all I have to do is click up here where it says add marker, click it, and then wherever I'd like to place it, just right here. Then I would name my species name. Here's my text box. If I'd like to add a picture, which you do, you can do a Google search image or you can paste the URL. And the last thing, if you wanted to change the icon to make it more of an animal, if you click this paint button here, you can change the color and then you can also use an icon. So for us, we did the Northern Spotted Owls. So we just did the bird picture, but if you were doing like an insect or like a mammal of some kind, you can pick different icons. All right, so that is task two. You're just pinning one endangered species. Have fun.